gonna kill you. I'm gonna freaking kill you. I'm gonna freaking. Cause appeal killer. Oh! Perhaps emboldened by my bloodlust, Kozapi's heart reeked of its own hunger for blood. Are they gonna body and Clyde this whole freaking school, dude? <laughs> yeah, baby, let's go! How's it going, everybody? Hoodlamut here, back with some more Chaos Head Noah. And uh, last time, uh, Kozue murdered everyone. <laughs> All right, that's a little bit of an over-exaggeration, but she killed all of her bullies. Turned them into a blood salad, dude. She just minced them up when they were trying to bully her. They, I mean, it was, and they had it coming. They were tag-teaming her 20 to, like, 20 to 1. That freaking, that's not, that's uncalled for. What the frick? You know, like, that, that was just, that was, that was the killing. They were trying to kill her, man. So, uh, you know, she, she, uh, returned the favor, you know? I don't know what else to say. I wanted them to get their comeuppance really bad, and since Senna wouldn't show up, you know, I mean, hey, we'll take it. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, Takumi has been having his own paranoid delusions of getting cameras flashing at him and, 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 and Shogun sneaking up on him in his wheelchair and all that bullcrap. And so he ran to the school to get Kozapi to save him. When he got there, she was scared and covered him in blood when she hugged him and wouldn't let go of him because she herself was covered in blood. Um, and when Takumi was trying to figure everything out, he went to the classroom, saw that there were no other girls there, and then he went up to the roof where he had, because he had gotten this like little mental flash of what he thought he saw was maybe just a delusion. But he went up there to check and get confirmation, and sure enough, a bloodbath was waiting for him up there. And so then... Um, it looks like Kozapi was trying to be like, hey, you know, but we're still friends, right? You'll still be my friend even though I'm a murdering killer. And then he screamed, and now he's running, and now we're here. So, with that, let's just jump into this, shall we? I couldn't help but run away. I was afraid of Kozapi for smiling in that situation, for killing them so brutally. I couldn't comprehend it. The people that had been there weren't people anymore. They were in pieces, and she'd done that to them. The scene on the rooftop had been burned into my mind and refused to leave. It repeated endlessly, looping over and over again in my head. And each time it did, I was hit with the most intense feeling of nausea. I'd lost count of how many times I'd dry heaved. I ran all around the school with no real destination in mind. Homeroom had already started, so there was no one in the halls. Kozapi wasn't following me. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Was running away the smart thing to do? Or should I have stayed with her? If Kozapi saw me as an enemy because I'd run away, would I be screwed? If she started thinking of me as an enemy, would she tear me into pieces like she had with those girls on the rooftop? Oh, crap. No. Please, no! But if that was true, what should I have done? Even if I went back to Kozapi now, I'd have no idea what to do or say. I, I just kept on running and running, almost tripping every couple seconds. And the very next corner I went around... I very nearly ran right into two people. Oh, hey, you, what the heck? It was Miss Mikun, together with one of the DQNs from my class who'd made fun of me earlier. He looked at me with clear unease, while the DQN stepped in front of me, blocking my path. The DQN had the most malicious grin on his face. Ho oh, ho, what's up, Esper? Hey, I'm curious about your powers. You in the mood to give me a little demonstration? I bit my lip. I didn't make eye contact. If I did, I knew I'd get punched right then and there. The DQN made no moves to take out his cell phone. If he did, however, I very well might have lost it and killed him. Just like Kozapi had with those girls. Seems like a few girls in our class decided to ditch. 
They haven't come back, so we're out on the prowl looking for them. But really, don't you think this crap's a total waste of time? Miss Me here's worried about Minako or whatever, but she's the witch who decided to ditch us. You agree with me, don't you, Esper? I didn't respond, and as a result, a sharp pain ran through me as he kicked me in the hip. Oh! Don't ignore me, freak! Knock it off. The second Miss Me couldn't spoke up, the DQN stopped, dead in his tracks. Taku, have you seen Minako? She was here before the bell went off. I've been calling and texting her, but she's not responding. I couldn't tell him. I couldn't tell him about the tragedy that happened on the rooftop. I had no idea who Minako was, but I assumed she was Miss Mikun's girlfriend. Could she have been among the tattered pieces of meat scattered across the rooftop? And what about Themi? Had Kozapi killed her too? She shouldn't have. Themi had been missing for a while, and... She hadn't been at school, either. Really, I couldn't believe I was still worrying about her after everything that happened. What the heck was I even expecting her to do? She was never going to come back anyway, so what was even the point? Uh, Esper? Why is there blood on your clothes? A shudder ran through me. It was blood from when Kozapi had clung to me. It had transferred from her onto me, and now, it fully covered the edge of my shirt. Oh no, they're gonna think it's him! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, I forgot he had that on him! I don't know! Dude! Oh frick! Oh no! Miss Mikun's eyes widened, and he gasped. Taku, what the heck happened? N nothing The second that left my mouth, I whipped around and ran away as fast as I could. I heard a voice calling after me, but I ignored it. And no one would believe him either. That's the that's the worst part. The thing is though, is there gonna be like minced meat up there, so like how How is anyone gonna explain what he did and how he did that, right? I mean like any explanation they could come up with could could be no more crazy than him saying that Kozapi did it, right? I mean, right? I mean, because there's no way. Like, that just doesn't happen, right? But dude, oh, dude, he's going to get blamed for this so bad. Oh, no. I bolted down the stairs. Ooh, frick! But in my chaotic frenzy, I lost my footing and tumbled all the way down the landing. As I lay there on the ground, I lost all will to stand back up. Would I ever be able to find peace again? Why did all these insane, horrific things keep happening to me one after another? Taku. A voice called my name. I only knew a single girl that called me that. I slowly, timidly looked up and saw a hand stretched out before me. Oh, Dini! Oh, yo! Dude, maybe she'll be able to save him from when everyone tries to freaking arrest him slash kill him, dude. Aw, that'll be sweet. <laughs> What's going on? I've never seen you in such a hurry. Does it hurt anywhere? It was Dimi. Dimi was here. Uh, Dimi. I'm... I felt tears starting to well up. Not wanting to embarrass myself, I fought them back and took the hand she was offering to me. It was so... So very warm. Dimi pulled me to my feet. 
Are you sure you're okay? That was a pretty bad fall. She brushed off my clothes, not leaving a single spot on me untouched. Dimi, where were you? Where had she been for all this time? Why hadn't she contacted me? She'd said she would protect me. Oh, me? I may or may not have been tardy today. <laughs> that didn't answer my question. <laughs> but when I saw that confused, airheaded smile of hers, my fear ever so slightly subsided. That smile had saved my life many times before. And when I saw it, I no longer had any need to ask her where she'd been, or what she'd been doing. I didn't need to ask her why she hadn't contacted me. Dimi had come back to me, and everything would be okay now. No matter what enemy I might come to face, Dimi would protect me. Or would she? Would she truly protect me? Had Kozapi really just so happened to not kill Dimi? A flicker of doubt appeared in the corner of my mind. It rose up in me like a passing thought. She had been absent for all this time, but she'd just so happened to come back today. And then she'd just so happened to be late to school on the day she'd just so happened to come back. And then Kozapi just so happened to commit murder on the same day Dimi had just so happened to come in late? No. Don't think about it. Stay positive. I rubbed my temples with my fingers, trying to calm myself down. What the heck is that? Kozapi running after us? What is that? You don't look so hot. Here, let me take you to the nurse's office. You can rest up a bit in there. As she said that, Dimi pulled me by my hand. Come on, let's go. Did Dimi not know about the tragedy that happened on the rooftop? But wasn't that only natural? She had said she'd been tardy today. And the fact that she didn't dare ask about the blood on my clothes was just her being considerate to me. It had to be. This is interesting. So, like, yeah, yeah, like, I mean, like he's saying, why did she just happen to come back today, right? I mean, there's obviously going to be a battle between Kozapi and her, probably, because we've had the uh, the whole insinuation that, you know, Kozapi's like, you know, you can't trust her because this and that and whatever. But, like, I, I just, I don't know how that's exactly going to look. But I'm trying to think timeline timeline-wise, where was she? This is the seventh chapter I think we're still in. So, was she with Shogun during this time? I think she or was supposed to be anyway. So now she's saying she came back. Okay. All right. Interesting. But And then she's running now, which is interesting, uh, to the nurse's office, which seems like she understands something that she's not telling us, right? So... Dimi attempted to pull my reluctant self down the stairs, but I planted my feet right before the entrance. Taku? She kept on trying to pull me along, pretty forcefully too, but I gently shook her hand off. Turning left in this hallway would bring us to the staff room, and after that, the school nurse's office. From there, if we kept going straight and exited at the end of the hall, We'd end up at the sports courts outside, after which we would be at the school gate. I didn't want to see anyone today if I could help it. I didn't even want to walk through the school. Uh. <laughs> Someone was going to find that slaughter up on the rooftop at any moment. And when they did, a huge panic would break out. I'd probably end up being the prime suspect, since my clothes were caked with blood and all. Oh, okay, so he's he's thinking about that too, which makes sense. I mean, he's paranoid, but um, the fact that he's pointing it out means it probably won't happen then, so I wonder what's going to happen instead. Is it just not going to be there? Like, it just didn't happen? It's just going to have disappeared? Did Kozue just, like, make it vanish? 
turn them all into antiparticles, add them to her giant buster sword or something. <laughs> like, I'm trying to figure out how this is going to go. Because if he's saying it now, it probably means it's not going to happen. That was why I wanted to get away from the school as soon as possible. I should just avoid the nurse's office and go straight to the entrance. I planned to tell Demi about the rooftop and Kozapi, but when I turned around... Uh? Huh? Huh? Uh. Demi was holding something sharp and pointed. No. What was that? A D-sword? It looked like a pair of steel wings. Oh yeah, he hadn't seen that. I forgot. Yeah, I'm like, I, I keep, I, I've been through so many endings where he has seen it that I'm like, I forgot. Yeah, he hasn't seen this yet. So actually, I think it was only one or two that he's seen it in. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just like she's just standing. What the heck? That's interesting. And the tips of the wings were pointed straight at me. <gasps> oh no, what? Bimi was about to stab me in the back any moment now. Our eyes met. No way, what? Dimi's eyes were filled with grief. She was the first to break eye contact. I'm sorry. Softly murmuring those few words, she brandished her sword. She was about to kill me. Dimi was about to kill me. Oh, is she trying to erase us because of Shogun? Because she said she wanted to do that in the first ending, right? So I wonder if they're going off of that. Like, she's like, you know, I, I didn't want to do this, but, you know, I have to. And, you know, even though Shogun won't let me, you know, or whatever, I have to do it in order to save him, right? But then, then Kozapi's going to show up covered in blood and freaking protect him. That's what's going to happen. Yo! I lost control. The second she was about to swing, I gripped her wrist to protect myself. I was a lazy piece of crap and I practically never exercised, yet I still had enough strength to overpower her. <laughs> Why? Why, gosh darn it! This witch! In the end, had Dimi been just another enemy? Had she been lying to me the whole time? Just like you had back then? Was she just trying to screw me over too? Was Dimi also one of Shogun's underlings? And if she was his underling, did that mean that she had been behind New Gen the entire time? And I'd been right from the very start? W why are you doing this? I'm sorry. But... You have to disappear, Taku. That decided it. There was no misunderstanding here. Dimi really was my enemy. This was her true nature. All that crap about protecting me had been nothing but a lie. You're lying. You're nothing but a freaking liar! I'm sorry for lying to you. But please, Taku, disappear. Crap! You, you you want me to disappear? Uh, all I can think about is how I trusted you more than anything. Uh, about how I thought I could depend on you no matter what. How can you stab people in the back look like it's nothing? You, you, you f freaking demon girl! Taku, I'm sorry. Sorry isn't enough! Who the frick do you think you are? I realized I was crying. A betrayal like this. I couldn't. The pure rage and frustration I was feeling right now. What I had felt with Yua didn't even come close. Dimi had crapped all over all the feelings I had for her. I'll never forgive you, 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 I'm gonna kill you, I'll never forgive you, I'm gonna kill you, I'll never forgive you, I'll never forgive you, I'm gonna kill you! Gripping her wrist even tighter, Dimi's expression contorted in agony. 
but the pain I felt was far worse. You tore my heart to freaking shreds. I'll never forgive you. I could never freaking forgive you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna freaking kill you. I'm gonna freaking- Cause appeal, killer. Oh! <laughs> it happened in an instant. Right before my very eyes, Themi's figure vanished. <laughs> Her body was blown to the side toward the shoe lockers and slammed right into them. She had been done for the moment she'd hit the metal lockers, obliterating them in the process. A thick cloud of dust enveloped the room. At first, I had no idea what the heck had happened. Yo. Oh, there she is! I knew it was coming! I knew she was gonna fight her, dude! Oh man, I didn't think it was gonna be like this, though. Takumi Shan's heart was crying out. And Kozapi heard it. Right before me, brandishing her D-sword, was Kozapi. Her expression was incredibly pained. Sweat shone on her forehead. And yet, even despite those things, she still forced herself to smile at me. Stuff like, I'm gonna kill you and I'll never forgive you. So, Kozapi came and killed her for you. Oh, she's actually done. It was a one-hit KO. Oh, okay. I, I, oh, maybe, I guess we technically don't know. But he said, when he said that, you know, she was done as soon as she hit the metal lockers, I just, I, 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 uh, I didn't know if that was it. I thought she was going to get back up and there was going to be a battle. We we're going to get a CG for it. Maybe we still will. She'll probably get up and be like, eh, or something. But dang, if that's just it, yo, what the heck? Her inner voice threw all of that at me. You killed her. You really killed Unable to believe what I had just seen, I approached the demolished shoe locker. The D-sword that had used to be Themis brushed against the tip of my shoe. It was lying on the floor, deprived of its owner. Oh my gosh, is she actually dead? Liquid slowly pooled beneath the sword. Blood. Whose blood was it? I didn't have to think long to know. Eventually, the D-sword by my feet was enveloped by countless black particles and vanished into the air. Themi was... dead? Just like that? Holy crap! <laughs> she straight up one hit KO'd her, dude! Dude, the freaking strongest of the Gigalomaniacs, baby! She's the strongest one! Holy crap! Dude, freaking folded her like an omelet! <laughs> oh my gosh, she was like, catch these hands? Nah, catch this sword, brother! <laughs> Just freaking walloped her! I can't believe that, that's crazy! What the frick, bro? Oh my gosh! Holy crap! I didn't have the slightest urge to confirm it. Sadness washed over me. And at the same time, I was left with an inescapable sense of regret. I had killed my own emotions deep down. Had my feelings numbed me to everything? Or had I numbed my feelings to everything? It didn't matter anymore. At least the tears had stopped falling. Kozapi, save me. Right now, Kozapi was the only one I could depend on. Even though Dimi had betrayed me, I still wanted someone to believe in. Or maybe I just wanted someone I could be with. Someone who would accept me. All that stuff about wanting to be protected. It was all just an excuse. I just... I didn't want to be alone. Yo. Even if she might betray me. Even if I had been betrayed already. I didn't want to be alone. I couldn't bear all of this awful bullcrap on my own.
dude, he kind of had a little quick 180 there. You know what I mean? He went from like, I don't know if I can trust her. She's freaking out to like, as soon as she just like stopped her right there, he's just like, I want to be with her. I love this person. Like, that's basically how he's talking. It's like, what the heck? But technically, I guess he's saying it was building up because when he was saying he wanted people to protect him or someone to protect him, he, he just didn't want to be alone. So, you know, there's that too, I guess. But it's just kind of funny. He seemed like he just kind of like flipped on a switch. It's like, talk about bipolar. What the heck? <laughs> if I was on my own, I guarantee I would cease to be me. I would just up and disappear. I approached Kozapi, desperate for someone to cling to. When I looked at her, what I saw was how terribly sad she looked. The sheer pain on her face. Her smile had long since disappeared. I made up my mind and embraced her tiny shoulders. She didn't fight it. But Takami Shan ran away from Kozapi before. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But, but please, save me. Takami Shan, are you Kozapi's friend? Who could say how many people Kozapi had already killed? Who could say what would happen if the police caught us? Knowing all that, would it really turn out okay if the two of us stayed together? I asked myself such a question, but it didn't take long for me to find the answer. Right now, I was together with Kozapi, and as long as we stayed together, it would all turn out okay. We had bigger enemies than the police. Enemies that were too dangerous to face alone. I... I... I need you, Kozapi. I want to... be with you. Takami Shan, you're a really super selfish person. Upon saying that, she wrapped her arms around my back. With the little strength she had left, she held me in return. But since Takami Shan said he needed Kozapi, Kozapi will do her bestest to give all the protection Kozapi has. Aww. Hey! It's like what that really dirty old guy said before. You don't need to hold back. Negative emotions are not something to be reprobated. That's why when anyone bees a bully to Kozapi, Kozapi will kill him. And that goes for anyone who bees a bully to Takami Shan, too. Feelings, both cold to the touch and warm as the sun, found their way from her to me. Feelings inside her that contradicted madness, kindness. Whether it was the same way her inner voice could reach me, or it was all in my head, I didn't know. Oh! Uh-oh! Right as that thought drifted through my mind, a girl's scream echoed throughout the school grounds. It had come from the top of the building. Had she found the slaughter on the rooftop? We had to run. Kozapi, if we stay here... The police will catch us. Oh my gosh. Are they going to run? Bonnie and Clyde? What the heck? For some reason, the moment I let go of her body, she immediately sank to the ground. <sighs> What's wrong? Close a piece. So tired. Kozapi's body is super heavy. No, is she gonna die because she kept doing delusions? Because of her sword? Is that what's going on? What happened? No! Hey, Takami Shan, in Kozapi's heart, so many delusions are showing up. Black 
blackiest black delusions. It's like Koza piece being crushed to bits. Black, blackiest black delusions? What do you mean? Regardless of what she meant, staying here wasn't an option. With Demi's corpse lying here, anyone who spotted us would find out exactly what we'd done. So, without getting an answer from her, I lent Kozapi my shoulder, and the two of us began to leave the school. We walked through the halls. As nice as it would have been to just leave, we were both covered in blood. Kozapi couldn't walk in her current state, and I had a feeling that if we went outside, we'd get hit with the cops all waiting for us out there cliche. It was probably best to just hide out somewhere. Even one of the empty classrooms would probably work. The atmosphere was tense. The scream earlier had kick-started a slowly growing commotion inside the school. Teachers quickly ran by us in a hurry. Students left their classrooms, ignoring that homeroom was still in session, and cautiously peered around the school to try and see what had happened. Crap! There were a lot of people. Maybe it would have been better to just leave after all. We had to hide somewhere. Somewhere like... Uh oh uh oh 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 There it was again. <laughs> that noise again. Stop it. Just stop it. I was going to go freaking insane. A few students spotted me from a distance. And not just students, but a few teachers, too. Uh-oh. Every single one of them had their cell phones out and were aiming them at us. And for some odd reason, they were all holding mirrors in their other hands. Oh, no. They're trying to get us. Coupled with a black wrath, an infernal bloodlust sprouted inside my head. Something within me was about to snap. Goes a piece gonna kill you. Perhaps emboldened by my bloodlust, Kozapi's heart reeked of its own hunger for blood. Are they gonna body and Clyde this whole freaking school, dude? Are they gonna kill everybody? What the frick? Kozapi's gonna kill you. 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 Kozapi was reacting to the mirrors. Despite the fact that she was having so much trouble walking, she raised her D-sword overhead anyway. Kozapi, don't do it! Clutching her petite frame, I tried to hold her back. Uh. Kozapi's gonna kill you! But I couldn't do it. Kozapi's body freed itself from me with tremendous force. Pulled along by her sword, Kozapi charged the group holding mirrors. So is it actually, like, kind of controlling her? She's, like, it's, like, pulling her with it? Oh, dude, what the frick? Her legs tangled with one another. She nearly slipped and fell. And yet, she still managed to move forward and swung her enormous D-sword. Oh, no! <laughs> Die. 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 And with a single swing, she had claimed about four human lives. <laughs> it was a staggering storm of destruction and brutality. Her movements and posture were like a novice's. If she leaned back any further, she'd fall over. And yet her sword's trajectory was both abnormally accurate and fast. Her aim was precise as she claimed each and every one of their lives with a single blow, each. Almost like she wasn't the one swinging the sword. The sword was the one swinging her. Yo, what? As she bathed in the fountains of blood, Kozapi began to cower. Yo, is this like the black heart crap that like Ayase was talking about? Like this was the wicked black hearts of the Black Knights and she's just not controlling it? What the brick? <laughs> Kozapi hopes everyone just dies. 
Kozupi doesn't want to kill anyone. Kozupi's sword is acting on its own. But Kozupi should just rely on her sword. Yo, what the frick? What is happening? She's possessed, yo. What is happening? Is this the real Kozupi? Dude, oh, that's why she was saying, who are you, remember? With the mirrors, because when she sees her ref her reflection, it freaks her out, probably because she's got that... She's got DID, dude! She's got two different personalities. Oh, Frank! Ah, oh, it's all coming together! Oh, no! And she's my favorite character! What does that say about me? <laughs> I love her! I love she's so wholesome and then psycho within, like, a split second. <laughs> It's so funny to me. Oh my gosh. What is happening? I could hear Kozapi's current mental state. Her mind was in total disarray. A total chaotic mess. I lent my shoulder to Kozapi once more and climbed the stairs along with her. Oh, Frick, there he is. Oh, that's a different uh, CG. They, they, different sprite they haven't had for him yet. But the very next moment, we ran into Miss Mikun and the other DQN coming down the stairs. <laughs> Crap. These guys again. I bit my lip. Wait. Am I seeing crap? What's with all the blood? For a split second, the DQN who spoke was taken aback. But the very next one, Miss Mikun grabbed me by the chest. Oh no, I knew it! I knew they were gonna come for him eventually, but oh, Frank. His face was teeming with fury. Did it. You did it! You freaking killed Minako! Seriously, who the heck was Minako? Noticing my confusion, the DQNs held Miss Me Kun back. Just hold it, Miss Me! We can't say for sure if they did it or not. I mean, first off, how the heck could two people do all that crap alone? All that? They were definitely talking about the slaughter on the roof. Listen close, Esper. Uh, I'm... Not an Esper... Freaking can it, crap for brains. I tried to tell him I wasn't an Esper, but he wasn't having any of it. His threat caused me to shrink back. Feeling unbelievably pathetic... I began to wonder if Kozapi would murder everyone here if I wanted her to. Yo, like like he's got a stand now or something? What the frick? Kozapi can... kill them. <laughs> no! Kozapi doesn't want to kill them! Kozapi's mind was a chaotic mess of conflicting, contradictory emotions. Kozapi can't kill them. Kozapi should just give in and kill them. <laughs> she should just give in? That was one thing I could never do. Get a load of this, Esper. You know your sister? Man, with how cute she is, you'd never know she was related to your ugly self. Her name's... Nanami, right? What? Why the heck did this DQN know about Nanami? So yeah, took it upon myself to show her a little bit of loving, all right. Dude, this is all still a delusion, isn't it? They're trying to trigger him. <laughs> they're trying to freak him out. They're, so they're going after Nanami now so that he'll just... Oh, what the heck, man? What are you saying? Do I really gotta spell it out for you? The DQN, acting far, far too friendly with me, placed his hand on my shoulder. Even though he was a guy, he was covered with the smell of perfume. The smell was so strong, it made me want to vomit. So, we always screw around with, like, ten other people. Killing time for the sake of it. Comes up that we were in the mood to go out and get some, and we get this offer. And you know who was on the menu? Your sister. Nanami wasn't some freaking object to be offered. What the heck had they done to her? Wait, no. More importantly, who the heck had offered them Nana? Guy's name was Darth Spider. Oh yeah, it is. It's Sua. 
He's trying. What is this? What is he trying to do though? Is he trying to? Is it just? Is it just leading us toward the first ending again, where it's like he's trying to get us to freak out, get our giggle mania, mania exposed, so that they can crucify us again? Is that what this is? This is just like a really crazy way of having it come out. Cause dang, oh man. All words left me. Guy goes out of his way to approach us, hands over your sister, and goes, do whatever you want with her. <laughs> like, dang, ain't that crazy? What a freaking deal! My vision turned bright red. Within my mind, it felt as if my blood was boiling. It billowed and bubbled, rising up to my head like magma. What did you do? Anonymy. Huh? <laughs> I told you! Showed her a good bit of lovin'! Oh yeah! She was also missing a hand? <laughs> Crab must have really hurt. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Oh no. <gasps> oh, Frank. That had all been real? When I'd come home afterward to check. I hadn't been able to find that freaking hand. So that was why. Yo, miss me. Don't leave me hanging. Tell him about it. You were there the whole time, after all. Forget that crap. He killed me. Forget that crap. Forget that crap. What the frick could possibly be more important? My sister is what freaking matters here, you freaking piece of crap! Don't you freaking dare compare that freaking harlot Minako to my precious little sister! Oh yeah, that reminds me. We took a real nice photo as a souvenir. Yo, Esper, you wanna see? Here, let me show ya. Dude, this is insane! I'll freaking kill you. Let's see, photos, photos. Oh, there it is. Here you go, Esper. Take a good look. The DQN grabbed me by the jaw and forced me to look at the image. <laughs> the photograph was definitely Nanami, but she was covered in blood. Oh no. Her eyes were hollow and she was completely naked. I'll freaking kill you, 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 I'll freaking kill you! The knife I'd been gripping dug itself deep into that DQN jerk's chest. I'd brought it with me today, just in case I needed it. Apparently, I myself had stabbed him. Oh, crap! I pulled it out, then stabbed him with it again. And then I did it again. What the crap? Taku, stop! Shut up! I pulled it out, then stabbed it back in. Miss me. And you. And you should all die for what you did to Nanami. You and the whole freaking world should all die. I'll kill you all myself! <laughs> oh, frick. I pulled it out and stabbed it back in. Then again. Then again. The DQN wasn't moving anymore. With his eyes open wide and his mouth drooling blood, he was very much dead. Hey, Kozapi, kill every last one of them. <laughs> With a sad look on her face, Kozapi nodded. Her D sword rose in her hand. Oh no! It real booted with a furious, resonant noise. And then, Miss Mikun could only stare in shock at the abrupt embodiment of mayhem. What? Oh! <laughs> oh no! With a single swipe, 
Dude, he became, he became the killer that he was afraid to become. Oh no! Miss Mikun's head was blown clean off. She had swung her sword so violently, she lost her balance and fell right on her rear. Oh my gosh! Miss Mi's collapsing body then fell on top of her, soaking her clothes with blood. Despite looking wholly miserable, she pushed the corpse aside. And then, she looked at me and smiled. Takami-shan killed someone too, huh? <laughs> Was she crying? Suffering? Or simply smiling? Within her pained smile was a mix of so many different emotions. Why are there so many enemies? Make it stop! She was sobbing inside her heart. But it was just as she'd said. We had enemies everywhere. So we had no choice but to kill them. That was what they all deserved. I wasn't the one in the wrong here. The pieces of crap that I'd attacked were... It was payback for what they'd done to Nanami. Nanami? Was she still alive? With all that blood, she was probably long dead. That, and her severed hand. There was no way she was alive. would never get away with this. I'd make freaking sure of it. I'd been on the run for so long. But that ended here. I would kill every last one of them. Every last one. When I'd seen that horrible, cruel image of Nanami, something inside me snapped. And now, there would be no stopping me. <laughs> what is going on? What is happening? Suamamaru stood before the gate to Suime Private Academy, gazing intently at the building. The car he had driven there, which sat alongside the gate, with his back leaning up against it. Although he wore a suit, a rucksack adorned his back as well. Emanating from within it was a bizarre mechanical sound. Oh, yup. Oh my gosh. The atmosphere within the school was one of an intense bubbling tumult. One Sua could feel even from where he stood. The pure hilarity of it all left Sua unable to contain his laughter. <laughs> I know for a fact that today will be a day I finally nab Nishijo Takami's code sample. His utterance was not directed at anyone in particular, and was heard only by himself. Around him stood several other men. Unlike Sua, their attire was far more uncouth and casual, though they all carried rucksacks just as he did. They were all very evidently suspicious with their eyes remaining glued to the school and speaking not a word to each other. All that seeped from their mouths were the same mutterings as Sua, spoken to no one but themselves. This is why the school was made a testing ground. Then again, that's what the big boys up at Nozomi had built it for in the first place. Yo, wait! Oh, it's a testing ground?! What?! In this route or in general?! Huh?! Suimei Private Academy had been founded by an institution backed by both Nozomi Technology and the Cosmic Church of the Divine Light. That makes so much sense why they'd be all together then, because they grouped them. They herded them there. Oh my gosh, because I was going to say, I'm like, there's so many, like, gigglomaniacs in this same school. You know, I did think that at one point, but I thought, ah, you know, suspension of disbelief, whatever. Now they gave a reason for why it happens. Oh my gosh. Oh no, they control the whole thing. Are the people in there fake? Oh no! Is it a simulation? For this reason, the number of gigalomaniacs enrolled was far higher than normal. Their proximity 
was no mere coincidence. It was simply inevitable that they had all gathered here. And to do this, they were all none the wiser. Oh. My. Gosh. Be that as it may, Sua could not help but let out a faint sigh. Up until this moment, he had employed countless methods of attempting to break Nishijo Takami. It had all been in an attempt to gather Nishijo's code sample. But the boy was a far weaker, far more pathetic person than he had anticipated. And because of this, the boy would never find the motivation to awaken as a gigalomaniac. Never would he have thought that one single boy would be so much trouble. However, this would end today. No more of this cat and mouse crap. I'll show you the awesome party I've kept tucked up my sleeve. There was no doubt that countless innocent people would die here, but the number of deaths hardly mattered. The Cosmic Church of the Divine Light's founder had said so, and Sua had thus been compelled to believe so. In the end, it really did not matter. The third melt would bring Shibuya to ruin this very day. No matter how many high schoolers died, they would be treated as sacrifices lost in the earthquake, and the truth of this day would be buried beneath the rubble. None would ever know of the murders that occurred here. So, let's get this party started. Sua opened the trunk of his car and retrieved his Darth Spider helmet. He put it on slowly and deliberately. When it stood alongside his suit and rucksack, the Darth Spider helmet made Sua appear all the more conspicuous. But this was not something that even remotely bothered him. With an air of utter composure, he advanced into the school. And upon Sua's signal, the men with the rucksacks followed closely behind him, remaining in complete, utter silence. I lent my shoulder to Kozue, and the two of us left for the courtyard. Oh! Are they going to kill her too? And when we got there, Senna was waiting for us. She was glaring at us with a harsh scowl on her face. Her D-sword was out, real booted and emitting a red beam of light. You two are fools. You've been caught in a trap. It's all an assault on your minds, the effects of which are causing everyone to act unstable. This is the work of true evil. To escape this nightmare, we have to strike down the source. The source is a porter. They're here somewhere, carrying a rucksack. They've been attacking you with delusions. Seneshan, are you Kozapi's friend? You're her friend, right? <gasps> Kozue, what do you mean, true evil? What about the effect thingies? The cocky roaches that attacked Kozapi and Takamishan were automatically our enemies. That's why we killed them. Kozapi didn't want to kill anyone. The voice in Kozapi's head wasn't making any sense. Her mind was a chaotic mess. You've given our enemies exactly what they wanted. But we're all being stalkered now. Kozapi is just so scared. Kozapi isn't going to be Kozapi any longer. I felt the same. The click of the camera shutters, the creaking of the wheelchair. Just hearing those things made me feel like my mind itself was disintegrating. I just wanted to let myself go, surrender to that oh-so-enticing bloodlust. Or maybe, maybe I already had. Do you two have any idea what it is you're fighting? I didn't know who the enemy was. I didn't know anything at all, really. Was my enemy Shogun, or was it someone else? I didn't even know who was attacking who anymore. What I could say for sure, though, was that everyone and everything in this world was against me. 
Don't let your delusions deceive you. You have to stop, or else your own delusions will be your downfall. Kozue, you can't use your D-sword any more than you already have. Negative matter is eroding your mind and body. You're not even able to walk properly, are you? If you keep this up, your very existence itself will collapse. Oh no. Senashan, are you Kosapis and Takamishan's friend? With a voice sounding like it was begging for salvation, Kozapi pleaded for an answer once more. I, too, waited with bated breath to see what Senna might say. I wasn't expecting anything. I really wasn't, but... I... am a friend to you both. Senna answered decisively. I'll face the enemies that are attacking you two. So, you have to stop these delusions. Dude, where were you back when freaking Kozue had to take on like 20 girls? Where the heck, where, where have you been? Hello? Before I killed a bunch of people just a second ago, or at least one person, I guess, technically. Like, where have you been? Hello? I was saved. I had someone on my side besides Kozupi. Another friend. Kozupi slowly lowered her sword. Kozupi's so happy. Seneshan, I love you so much. Tears began to form in the corners of her eyes. Kozapi's gaze clung to Senna like a lost puppy. <gasps> oh! oh no! No, Kozapi! Oh no! Without warning, Kozapi swung her D sword. Oh! Senna instinctively deflected the blow with her own. However, the shock of the attack was enough to blow her backward, and she fell to the ground. Yo! <laughs> Kozue! What are you- Kozupi? Senna made it clear she was on our side. Why are you trying to kill her? No! I'm not Kozupi! Crying out in her inner voice, she swung the sword up past her head and held it above Senna. I'm not Kozupi! <laughs> oh! She swung down with the intent to kill. With only a nanosecond to spare, Senna rolled across the ground, just barely avoiding being cleaved in two. Quickly getting back to her feet, she brandished her D-sword once again. Are you... <laughs> trying to kill me, Kozue? Crying profusely, Kozapi shook her head back and forth wildly in fierce denial. Oh no. No! Kozapi's hands moved on their own! Help! Senishan! Takamishan! What the heck was happening to her? Seriously, what the frick was going on? You've been possessed by the negative delusions. You've lost control of your D-sword. So, against Kozapi's own will, she was now an indiscriminate killing machine? Kozue, erase your D-sword! Kozupi can't! Kozupi can't do it! Uh. Dang it! Kill! 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 Yo! A voice spoke. But it wasn't her inner voice. It was Kozapi's actual voice. Chanting kill to no end. The exact opposite of what her inner voice wanted. Help! Kozapi doesn't want this! Senna! Help her already! All I could do was beg from the sidelines. There was no way I could have walked into the middle of the fray. Reveal your delusions and neutralize the- oh, uy. Ah. Kozupi launched an unrelenting attack. 
but all she was doing was barreling around with her D-sword. It was a purely brutish attack with no aim, one only a total idiot would use. Kosapit doesn't want to kill you! Seneshan! Kosapit doesn't want to kill you! Despite her body staggering around, despite her feet drunkenly stumbling, despite her gaze not even facing Senna, Kozapi's sword headed straight towards Senna without fail, doing everything in its power to rip her in two. Dude, this is crazy! I did not expect this to be a turn that this would take! What is going on? I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll freaking kill you. I'm gonna freaking kill you. Oh my gosh! Lashing out at her with nothing but nonsensical attacks, her assault continued. Each and every swing was extremely heavy, yet sharp as could be. Senna was pressed for time. Her expression grew restless. Listen! Ooh. The swords mutually clashed with one another. Senna repelled her blow, breaking Kozapi's guard. But in Kozapi's counterattack, her D swords seemed to disregard the very laws of physics themselves. Wait, what? Thick blood sprayed from her slender body. That was all a delusion. Oh my gosh! Senna cut around and made her way to Kozapi's back. The once bloodied corpse of Senna vanished. Taking advantage of Kozapi's shock, Senna managed to pin her arms behind her back. Ugh. Toss aside your D sword, Kozue! Let go, 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 let go! Kill Kozapi! Senna Shan, kill Kozapi! Kozapi isn't bad! Kozapi isn't bad! It's everyone else that's bad! Kozapi doesn't want to see this me! Kozapi doesn't want to kill Seneshan either! So... Kozapi's mind and body were at odds with one another. They had split completely in two. Her small body thrashed around violently in an attempt to break free. But in her mind, she could only weep. I'm begging you, throw down your sword, Kozue. Please, return to how things were. I will never abandon you. You are the only friend I have. Oh. Tears formed in Senna's eyes. She was crying. No! Right then. Kozapi's arm made the strangest of movements, bending in an arc that shouldn't have been possible. Ooh, gross! Ah! A dull crack could be heard as her joint dislocated. A muted scream came from her. <laughs> oh! No! Before I even knew what happened, Senna, who had been keeping Kozapi pinned, had been impaled from behind by Kozapi's boorish D-sword. The edge gnawed through her, grinding into her flesh like a saw. Oh! In the blink of an eye, Senna's clothes were turned a deep crimson. Gritting her teeth in pure anguish, she tried to toss Kozapi aside to put space between them but she was too late. Kozapi whipped around and slashed her sword in a straight horizontal line. Oh! And the side of Senna's body was torn to pieces. Ah! 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 Kozapi turned to Senna who was writhing in intense agony, and then she thrusted her D-sword directly at her. Senna Shan, run! Die, 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 die! Oh my gosh! 
goes away. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Die, 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 die. I couldn't save you. You looked up to me so much, but I couldn't help you. Die, 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 die. Your cry for help. If only I'd noticed it sooner. Talking with you goes away was the only time I ever felt at ease. Die, 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 die. For looking up to me. For what we had. Thank you. Die. Oh. Oh my gosh. I couldn't look straight at it. Is Seneshan dead? She was dead. Oh, well, there we go. I guess we know now. Assuming it isn't a delusion, I guess. Sena was dead. Just like everyone else. Even though she'd been our friend. Even though she could have saved me and Kozapi. Kozapi had killed her. The sword remained pierced into our friend's corpse. Kozapi's disjointed arm hung down lifelessly. And on her face was a smile, accompanied by a waterfall of tears. Seneshan, Seneshan, say something. Let's all go eat crunchy kuns together. Takami-shan can come, too, so the three of us can take a picture again. Her heart was crying out in despair. Hey, Takami-shan. Why isn't Seneshan saying anything? Why? Sena is... Dead. Kozapi killed her. Kozapi really killed her. Kozapi fell to her knees. With one hand, Kozapi softly picked up what was left of Senna's lifeless corpse. What had once been a girl of intense beauty was now smeared from head to toe in blood, with her long black hair covering her face. Why did this? Kozapi didn't mean for... This isn't what Kozapi wished for. Kozapi didn't wish for this. Seneshad, Kozapi loved you. Kozapi really, really loved you. You were like a big sister to Kozapi. Why? Why did Kozapi kill Seneshan? Why? May the divine light save ya. Oh no. Before I knew it, a man in a Darth Spider helmet had appeared near us, holding a small handgun, pointed directly at us. Y Ooh. Darth Spider. I remember what that DQN had told me before I'd killed him in a fit of rage. He'd said that Darth Spider had offered Nanami to him. It's... you. Hmm? Did you say something? Oh! Gah! 
He'd shot me! My leg exploded with pain. The bullet had struck me right in the knee. Oh, dang! Takamishan! Kosapi's D sword began to hum. Huh? And Darth Spider's helmet was shredded like it was made of paper. It wasn't Shogun's face beneath the mask. Instead, it was the face of a young man. Oh! Uh <laughs> the man retaliated, turning Kozapi into a mess of gushing blood and broken bones. No! And then, Kozapi's legs gave out from beneath her. No, dude, no! You freaking jerk! Why did her sword kill Senna but not him? I thought it, it sliced off his face or his mask. How did I kill him? What do you mean? Dude! Oopsie. <laughs> Shouldn't be killing you quite yet. I've still got to nab your code samples. Who was this guy? Who in the heck was this jerk? I couldn't stop thinking that I'd met him somehow before. But I couldn't remember where. How had he even gotten his hands on a gun to begin with? Dude, you don't remember freaking uh... Does he not remember meeting him with, uh, with Bon? I guess he was talking to Bon the, most of the time, but... Huh. But I did know... That this must have been him. The so-called source Senna had mentioned. Was he Shogun's underling? Or was he some other enemy? I didn't know the answers to any of these things, and I didn't need to. Because, at the very least... I knew he was the source behind everything. I wanted to kill this jerk so badly. But my aching leg was suffering from an incredibly unusual sensation. And before long, I couldn't even stay standing anymore. Ugh! The next bullet landed in my shoulder. The impact of the shot sent me sprawling on the ground. The bullets dug into my flesh, and the sheer pain and heat made me scream. Oh! Next, my arm. I dropped the knife I had been clenching tightly in my fist. Dang! You said you needed a code sample! Why are you just freaking peppering him, dude? What the frick? My entire body was emitting distress signals. I couldn't even tell where I was being shot anymore. I was dying. This pain was too much for me to take. The man approached me. He peered at my face, then removed something odd from the rucksack he was carrying. It was some sort of headgear, with more cables than I could count. Oh! <laughs> yeah, baby, let's go! Kill. What? I'm gonna kill you. Rising up from the ground, Kozapi swayed heavily. She was dragging her leg. Almost having to force herself, she raised her blade. Let's go, what a beast! What the? Is she a freaking monster? Die! <laughs> kill him! Get him! I heard the sound of the sword cutting through the air. It interlaced perfectly with the sound of gunfire. Oh! Oh! The D-sword utterly crushed the man's body. His final breath soon dissipated, and the man's all-too-familiar way of speaking would never be heard again. Let's go, Kozapi! What a little legend! Oh my gosh, she's so cool! Oh. <laughs> uh. uh. <laughs> Moaning, Kozapi coughed up a spatter of blood. Her chest was dyed a rich vermilion from the bullets of the dead man. No! No! No, dude, no! Oh, she saved us.
And then, as if her strength had been sapped entirely, she collapsed face up onto the flower bed resting directly behind her. A myriad of black particles began to envelop her D-sword. A hulking mass of sheer mayhem, inspiring awe to all those who beheld it. The truly beautiful yet fearful blade gradually began to waver. Takami Shan, Kosapi can't go on any longer. Bearing the excruciating pain shooting through me, I crawled as best as I could toward where Kozapi lay. Only a few moments ago, my entire body had been blazing with heat. But now, I felt so terribly cold. It was like I had plunged straight into a lake on a cold winter's day. My whole being was shivering with a force I couldn't stop. I couldn't feel my fingers anymore. My vision had gone blurry, too. Are they going to die next to each other like freaking Bonnie and Clyde style? Oh my gosh. But even so, willing forth all the strength I could muster, I stretched my hand toward the girl lying in a radiant array of brightly colored flowers. My cold fingertips met Kozapi's warm, tender fingers, desperately seeking something to cling to, Wishing with all my heart to find it, I draped my fingertips on top of hers and closed them. No! No! Oh my gosh! What is this Kingdom Hearts music right now? I found myself lying in the flower bed, just like Kozapi. The stench of blood was masked perfectly by the rich scent of the flowers. It felt rigid, but found warmth through the soil on my back, as well as Kozapi's fingers. The sky was so very high above us, stretching as far as the eye could see. And, for some reason, I... Hey, the sky... It's really, really pretty. It's like a whole bunch of clickety clackities are decorating it. Oh. She was right. The sky we saw shifted hues endlessly. And just like she'd said, it was like there was an array of colorful beads overtaking the sky. From my pocket, I retrieved the cell phone strap that Kozapi had given me some time ago. I had only just remembered that I'd even had it. I took the cell phone strap in my palm, then clasped her hand once more, embracing the strap in the middle. I wasn't strong enough to maintain a solid grip anymore, but it didn't matter. Oh. If only Kozapi could flow up high in the sky too. Kosapi wishes she could be a clickety-clackety. You can. Throw away your piece of crap body. Throw away this piece of crap world. You can be a star if you truly wish to be. If you do that, then you'll never have to worry about pain or sorrow ever again. If you do that, then you'll live in peace and tranquility forever. Interesting. Oh my gosh. No. Oh, I don't like this. Oh. Talk to me, Sean. Won't you come with Kozapi? Of course I will. I'll always be with you. You were the only person who didn't betray me. You were the only person trying as hard as you could for my sake, even until the very end. So I'll never betray you. 
I'll stay with you, even until the very end. Thank you. Um, is it okay if Kozapi falls in love with takami Shan? Oh. I don't mind. My consciousness was fading, but I answered all the same. Oh. I realized that the hand I had been clasping was slowly beginning to lose its warmth. I realized that the strength was slowly fading from the fingers clasping my hand. But I didn't care. I wasn't going to let go of her hand until the very end. I tried my darndest to hold back the tears I knew would come. The sky I saw turned a pure white. All the clickety clackities were disappearing. I figured something had happened, but I didn't really care anymore. Dude, so they're like transitioning as though they're dying and seeing the light, but it's probably that white light, right? The thing that that Beamy called the first, uh, the excuse me, the third melt or whatever. That's probably what that is. The same thing that uh, Ayase and, and him fought, which they said was Gladiol or whatever. It's probably all, well, actually, I think theirs was like it was a it was a darkness, wasn't it? No, because oh yeah, because he he started seeing visions though after they so they did get a, a white flash of light. I forgot, yeah. That did happen, it just happened uh, when they were inspecting Bon and Yua, when they got Yua's D-sword, so. Yeah, okay. Relief washed over me. Relief that Kozapi wouldn't have to see the clickety-clackities die out. I gently closed my eyes. In that very moment, time came to a stop. The entire world came to a stop. And so, within that sky, with colors as rich as those beads, Kozapi and I shone as stars, floating in perpetuity. Wow, dude! That was it, huh? Oh my gosh, dude, that sucked! That was sad! Man, dude! I didn't expect it to go that route. We were being insane. I thought we were gonna run away like Bonnie and Clyde, like just running off into a, a psycho delusion. I didn't think it was gonna get like kind of wholesome right at the end. I mean, as wholesome as, as you can be after being like serial killers, I guess, but dang, man. Now you're gonna hit me with this cute music? What the frick? <laughs> like, what, what is this freaking whiplash I'm getting right now? Oh my gosh. Dude, I actually, I really liked that. I really liked that particular route. That was a good route. That's probably my favorite route thus far. I know I've said that every time. This one actually is my favorite though, I think. I really like it. I quite like it a lot. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This, this was a, it, I liked it too because the other ones felt a little disjointed. This one actually kept me guessing throughout the whole thing. I thought it was going to be a big ordeal of it being like, oh my gosh, when are they going to find all the bodies and then like frame Takumi, which kind of did happen, but it just, it, it kind of was, it, it it was skated over because he ended up killing everybody with, with Kozapi, so. But uh, this was like obviously the route where he got his protector, so to speak, who, who killed on command whenever, you know, he asked, right? So that was kind of... Uh, that was kind of interesting. But, uh, man, this was like the gruesome ending, though. But I, I don't know, man. I liked it. I just like Kozapi, dude. She's a fun character. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> hey, <laughs> replaced it. <laughs> that's funny. And that's it, huh? Wow. Wow. That was kind of wild. Okay, yeah. Uh yeah, like I said, it's uh that was a, that was a good ending. That was pretty wild. That was like really Man, I don't even know 
what more to say than I've already said, you know? It's we're seeing again like some 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 new cogs in the wheel of the overall arcing, you know, story arc, I guess. Um I feel like the biggest reveal honestly was the whole that the, the the fact that Suime Academy is is a, a school that Nozomi built to like hoard gigalomaniacs. I, I feel like that was the biggest and most interesting reveal for me, anyway. Um, but yeah, seeing uh, seeing hi- like hi- uh, Takami and Kozupi being like basically like the same person, like they were saying, right? They're like, hey, we're just like each other, and even though he tried to deny it, it's like it was interesting how similar they were while also being extremely different in terms of like outward personality i guess so uh yeah but man, man dude seeing kozapi be a little boss and just ripping through people with a giant sword dude that was freaking great oh man i want more of that man i hope we get some of that in the freaking true ending that's gonna be fun but yeah i guess that's pretty much it i don't really have a ton more to say other than what i've already said uh this time around so i guess with that um next time we will be going through i believe it should be senna's route am i wrong let me see real quick yeah senna's route we will be going through senna's route in the next episode and so now we only have a couple more routes uh before we get to the true ending so uh until then i guess (laughs) thank you all so much for watching And I hope to see all of you ruffians in the next video. God bless and peace.